sneakers, tracksuit pants, young Mexicans with moustaches. Why would they do that? <laughs> you have your whole life to be old. <laughs> we might find out, and I don't know about that with Jim Jeffries. Uh, it seems very specific. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't. I shouldn't have mentioned Mexicans. They're just regular young fellows with moustaches, but. But Luis has a big moustache at the moment. He looks like that bloke who helps out Kimmel. Oh, yeah. Guillermo. Yeah, Guillermo. Guillermo's one of the dads in my kid's baseball league, man. I see him in oh, the really? little league. Yeah, he's oh, a, sweet. Yeah, he seems like a nice fella. I don't know. I've never spoke to him. But he's not hitting anybody or anything. He seems <laughs> nice enough. That's always that's always the uh, the benchmark right there. I didn't see him hit anybody. He's a nice guy. <laughs> he didn't punch anyone in the head. I like him. <laughs> at a children's baseball game. <laughs> But by that, good you know, my measurement, that's pretty good. That's pretty <laughs> good. So I'll do the quick plugs. I'm going to be in Buffalo and where else? Norfolk, Virginia. Mm-hmm. Philadelphia. And Philly, Philly yeah. at the Met. Yeah, that one's going to be a big one. It's going to be a big one. Thanks for everyone who came out this weekend as well to come see the gigs. We had that's this play. week you're going to be at those clubs. This those, week uh, I'm theaters. there. Tickets still available. Maybe, maybe not, but I assume so. But uh, come along, come along. We'll tell some jokes. It's a good early Christmas present. Or a Thanksgiving gift, if you will. <laughs> Has anyone ever been given out a Thanksgiving gift? I, guess I don't just think a, so. Just no. the meal? Just mm. food and then you watch football. And then you watch football. And you have mm-hmm. to talk about what you're thankful for around the table. Oh, yeah. Well, we this, should do that. This year is easy. <laughs> it's easy. I just go like this. Oh, baby, I'm thankful for the baby. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, and Hank. <laughs> <laughs> Both my kids, thankful for the kids. It's easy as a parent to yeah. do that. But then the kids get involved and they're just like this. Uh, new season of Fortnite. Um, <laughs> Legos. I mean, what else are they going to be Jack. thankful for? They don't, me, know, they don't know anything. Me. About- they get to hang out with me all the time. So let's go around. I'm thankful for all of you and Luis. <laughs> <laughs> all of who? The listeners? Yeah, all the listeners and everyone in this room. I'm thankful for the world. Wow. Jack, what are you thankful for? That's a really lame one, but okay. Hey, it's the place we live. <laughs> yeah, you got to be thankful for the world. I'm thankful for having employment through the pandemic. Ah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm not thankful for giving it to you. <laughs> <laughs> if any, I think about it all the time. I'm you like, put me in a tight spot, Jack. <laughs> I'm like, what's he doing right now? Why isn't he doing it for me? Why do, why do I need an assistant when I'm at home all day, every yeah. day for a year Someone's got to fluff the pillows. <laughs> oh, I'm so used to it. I think I'll have an assistant in retirement. Yeah. <laughs> Just to read me the TV guide. I still got a guide, you know. <laughs> All right, Kelly. Kelly. Oh, um, I'm thankful for my family. I'm thankful for you guys. I'm thankful that I get to come here and we actually all enjoy hanging out together. That is actually very fun. Mm. Mm-hmm. That's good. Well, that's very I don't nice. know about you guys if you enjoy it. But no, I, no. I, don't I, I, I assume you. <laughs> don't hurt my feelings. Yeah. We're almost over. Okay. <laughs> we, we are good company. You're right. <laughs> Um, I don't. Oh, you know what, Arnie, right here. I yeah, got Arnie this year. I'm thankful for Arnie. Yeah, well, your lovely uh, flatmate that lives over there. You're not thankful we? for that. that <laughs> Amos skill. No. Now I actually do enjoy having someone live at the house. I, I, I really it's been nice. Yeah, yeah. Because we we fluctuate, don't we? <laughs> No, I mean, every oh, two I, weeks I yell at I'm you. I'm glad that word ended that way because we fucked. <laughs> <laughs> we fucked. Uh, every, <laughs> wait, every two three, or two or three weeks I uh, uh, yell at you or yell at me when one of the – usually I yell at you and then you yell back at me. But uh, we work it out. It's fun. I, overall, I like it. Yeah. I'm surprised to find out that Forrest is grumpy at home. Yeah, that was a shock. It, yeah. It's weird. I, I mean – yeah. yeah. Well, the, the other six dwarfs moved out. <laughs> <laughs> For seven? Uh, okay. <laughs> You're the seventh, you see. Um, pay the big bucks. Yeah. <laughs> Amos Gill, this is this is your second Thanksgiving in America. What do you got to be thankful for? I'm thankful to everyone from Springfield, Missouri, who came out to watch me perform last week. That was everybody, wasn't it? Wonder- it? The whole town, wonderful <laughs> place. I'm thankful for Bass Pro World, the world's biggest. Oh yes, I forgot ammo to mention that in mine. Yeah, that's and sweet. They had the Second Amendment Gallery there. That was Ooh. nice. Ooh. It was like Madame Tussauds if she was in the NRA. That place. It was just. <laughs> Statues of Teddy Roosevelt and deers and who is Madame Tussauds or Tussauds? Wax is waxes. No, people. I know who she is, but, yeah, but know who what she, she looks yeah. like? Was she just a chick that was really? Did she burn down in a candle fire incident? <laughs> That's a good question. She's like, half woman, half candle. Yeah, it, was she made of wax? <laughs> 
question. I you thought know, you'd I thought that, you'd throw me in there too, Amos. I mean, you've been staying no, in my no, house. If he hasn't saying, mentioned the yeah, shitty yeah, titty, he's not going to yeah, mention yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like you've been oh, staying. Yeah, the shitty titty was the best. The house. Yeah, you don't you don't really <laughs> contribute much there at all. But it's been a free free ride for you. And what Forrest does no at the thankful. moment is he talks to his dog about me so I can hear. So he goes, oh, Arnie, he's an ungrateful guy, huh? <laughs> real bad house, man. Huh? Leaves coffee everywhere all over the table. He's a real piece of shit, huh? It's a good bit. <laughs> and, then, and then Arnie comes into Amos and goes, he's not happy with you today. <laughs> it's a good I, bit. I, by the way, I've got some bad news for you, Jim. You know how oh. you don't eat pork anymore? No, I don't. Yeah, because- The McRib's back. Yeah. No, not the McRib. Yeah, well, that, is, that is bad news. <laughs> this is, this, this is, oh, no. this, I don't know how you'll take this. But a study's come out today in the UK and they say that lobster and octopus and squid are and sentient crab. beings and crab who have deep feelings and emotions and that we shouldn't be eating them anymore. Didn't we kind of I, know we shouldn't I, boil them alive? Well, that one's a I never. I didn't think we should have been boiling them alive yeah, before. People used to be like, the best thing is when you can hear them scream. It's yeah. like, that's dark. <laughs> yeah. well, it's not the scream, it's the air it's leaving the their body. leaving the shell. Oh, sure it is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Whatever you have to say to make yourself. Yeah. Well, you rule out squid. You throw them in there. I had dreams. <laughs> um, I, I don't really eat squid anymore. I eat calamari, which I think is a lower breed of squid, or is it's it the squid. same? I think it's just, it's just it's squid, squid cut in a way. squid. Uh, yeah, I a lower brain. <laughs> <brain. laughs> it's the I, dumb I, squid. I, 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 used to, I used to think it was just a sock of squid. It was like a squid part, but not a squid or something. No, it's a squid. Oh, well, you see the tentacles in there. You have the. You'll have the. No, the shitty American one with it. I used to eat baby, baby octopus salads. That was a real fucking. <laughs> oh no! That was a real genocide. That was. <laughs> that was I'd have about fifteen of them on the plate on a bed of lettuce. Oh, a healthy meal. Here's the thing, though. We had Suzanne Samard on talking about trees, and and she's written a whole book that I've read. Where trees definitely are communicating with each other. They help each other. They'll if one tree is sick, it'll prov they'll provide them with nutrients or food and stuff like so. Uh, anything that you eat is communicating, is alive. They, there's an argument that it's has some sort of what we would call feelings or something like that if you're anthropomorphizing. So you're kind of fucked if you just don't eat anything. No more eating. Cardboard. Yeah. Well, that, and that um, came from a tree. Yeah, but I don't, yeah. Think, I don't, <laughs> think, this, I don't <laughs> think the squids and the lobsters are treated as bad as the pork. The, 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 the pigs aren't treated well. They're locked in little tiny spaces. And all that stuff. You don't think they're treated? Have you ever seen how they, if they I catch had, squid? If I had a pig who was just a wandering around a film, yeah, but a lobster tank, yeah, that's not good. The lobster <laughs> tank. <laughs> they, 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 they put rubber, rubber bands, bands on their claws. <laughs> <laughs> all right, which brings us to Luis. What have you got to be thankful for? You By the it. way, Marie Tussaud was a French artist known for her wax sculptures. Is it Tussaud, not Tussaud? Tussaud, whatever. I don't know. Madame Tussauds. I say Tussauds. 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 I say three sod. Oh. <laughs> oh. Advanced. Uh, I'm thankful for not getting fired last week, despite right. all the technical problems. Well, it's still today. This, this job is all I have. So. Yeah, but. What? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the fucking thing's broken again. <laughs> that was a good one. You got me. <laughs> Acting. I thought you were having a stroke. I thought you were having a stroke too. He's like, yeah. <laughs> Podcast canceled. <laughs> and I'm thankful we're closer now. Oh, we are oh. closer. Are you guys? Yeah. Is he on your podcast? He laughed yet? at the video he made. I'm going to so. kill him by throwing a match at his car. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, Jack, right, Jack. What do you got for us? Got? Comment world, it's comment world. Reading comments off the internet in comment world. Opinionated fucks for we don't give a shit. So fuck them in the ass and let's be done with it. Wow. It's comment world. Now, right now, there's there's uh -huh. some parent in a car with their kids going, oh, it's all right, they can listen to this. And fuck them in the <laughs> ass. <laughs> Well, uh, blame Michael Miller. Have we, is that a new, that's an old song, right? That's an old one. So I know, no one's I, made any new songs. I know, when there's, like two I know or three. when there's comment. Well, Jack hasn't put any effort in because that's the, this is the easiest of your jobs, right? That's not true. I do a lot of organization for this one, and it, this one hurts his feelings the most. Oh uh, yeah, because yeah, he's yeah. got to read all the comments. Oh yeah, that's true. <laughs> yes, this one is the, the hardest for his mental health. <laughs> I shield all of you from the pain. <laughs> that's true. What have you got yeah. for us, Jack? Uh, some people started calling the episode where we didn't have a guest the Seinfeld episode because it was the episode about nothing. True. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I we like do, it. We should do an episode on Seinfeld. Yeah. Yeah. Write that we'll down. Get Larry David. The impersonations have gone viral. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. uh, you know what? I uh, Amos was playing the clip from uh, the Mike Moy show, and it was it was 
the impressions, and I heard Jax, and I was like, man, Jax was really good. Yeah, Jax Seinfeld yeah. was really good. Both yeah. of them, and there was a Martian in there, too. Mar- the Mar- Martian. Martian. You were really, because I saw you do an impression, but when I just heard it, I was like, very good. Yeah, I thought it was cool. I was on the, I'm on Australian radio now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sweet. you, you hit the small time. <laughs> 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 oh, you're the Marvin the Martian fellow. Oh, God, now Mick's listening to this. I just caught this one. Love you, Mick. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, Jack was in that interview more than me, and I was actually in it. They cut me out of oh, it completely. <laughs> well, because well, you're a disaster. Do, we tried to do the interview, but Jack, for fucking this cunt, just defamation after defamation. <laughs> He told some story where he allegedly I said something bad. I won't repeat it. Yeah, don't repeat that. Yeah, story. don't repeat it. And I'm like, what are you trying to do? You're trying to fucking get me. Oh, I don't fucking know. I'm just trying to butt into the conversation. No, he, he got me stoned before the interview. Uh, What's and that then, got to do with it? Well, because then I just started shooting for anything I could, like anything that came to my brain. I would say, and then we got off air, and you're like, what the fuck do you always have to go dark for? <laughs> He, uh, he, he did some cancelable statements. Mm, I did not. A couple of I alpha told a males story, arguing. It's just fun. quickly, <laughs> yeah. I, I told a story about when he introduced himself don't to my girlfriend. Don't, I won't tell it tell don't repeat thing. it. Don't, yeah, don't Listen, repeat guys, it. you're both stars. Don't Sign worry up about to my it. Patreon okay. I'll tell you what you did. <laughs> I didn't do anything to his girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> the story's a lot lighter than that. <laughs> All right, next one. What's the comment? Did someone comment? No. <laughs> there was a comment. I don't know how we got into there. Uh, but someone added that because our discussion about Hollandaise, they said if you add tarragon to Hollandaise, it becomes Bernays. Oh. Mm. Mm. I think Bernays is, uh, was made yeah. with a cheese, too. We always fight during the Hollandaise. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure Bernays is made with a cheese, but Thanks, I'm not sure. Really. <laughs> I'm looking it up. I should have said that when Al Forrest was arguing. I know. Ah, he was so pissed. Fuck. <laughs> I'm a fucking week late on we mm. shit. We always fight during the holidays. Yep. Oh, yep. God, that would have gotten a good laugh. I guess they're right. Yeah, no Just save it for Thanksgiving. Very nice. Yeah, it's a, mother, a child. Uh, considered the child of the mother hollandaise sauce. Oh. It's disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like any of that. <laughs> uh-uh. um, someone left a comment saying, Jim absolutely killed in Omaha tonight. My wife and I were dying laughing. Thanks for oh. popping by our crappy Midwest, in quote, city. Hope the people treated you kindly. Great it's show. It's all right, Omaha, man. It's clean and it's fucking... It's, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what... <laughs> That's all you had. <laughs> it's, it's, it's clean yeah, and... Yeah, uh, no, because I've got a lot of places that aren't fucking clean, yeah. man. It's very nice. It's well put together. It's pretty... Like, there's no one on the fucking street, man. It's empty. But I've I got to give it up for winter in cold towns. Keeps the homeless out, doesn't it? Oh, uh, really? <laughs> oh, no. The snow really keeps the place nice, doesn't it? Oh, my God. Oh, that's, that's very uh, sympathetic of you. To be I'm not co signing this statement. <laughs> we the statements of Jim Jeffries do not reflect the members yeah, of not, the ID Yeah, we IDK need to put podcast. a Warner Brothers warning up at the front. Well, I've said something similar, but not in a mean, heartless way like that. I, <laughs> what I've said is the reason there's a problem, a homeless yeah. problem in Los yeah. Angeles and not Omaha is because the weather's better yeah. and people. But you just said it so like. So you're saying oh, yeah. Omaha's not nice? No, <laughs> I'm saying it that you were like, yeah, fuck the homeless. That's the way, that's basically what you just said. I just was walking on the street, not tripping over people. No one's bothering me. What I was you like, tripped over anyone. I homeless all the time. I you never look. Them? I never look where I'm going. Yeah. They're everywhere. He's always texting and walking, Jim. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Go to Omaha. I'm not paying attention. I always trip over because I'm wanking. <laughs> Well, Wait, that's a different issue. You look up when you wank? No, I look down at the homeless, but I can't see my feet because my dick's so big. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I walk like in a straight line. <laughs> you didn't say you were thankful for your big dick. <laughs> I'm not. It's a hindrance. Gets him in trouble. Uh, I get lightheaded and fall over on homeless people. <laughs> well, uh, speaking of jerking off, uh, my boss walked in while Jim was talking about Smurfette. And Forrest was talking about hollandaise sauce at the same time. He looked at me and said, what the fuck are you listening to? That was a hard one to explain. Yeah. Well, it's not that hard to explain. Just Wait, show him the A couple link. of blokes talking about <laughs> sauce and Smurfette. So now Why I, the fuck are you spying on me, cunt? <laughs> so now I have all the cartoon characters that people wrote in and said that they find the most attractive. Ah, good, good, good. This is what I wanted. And I'll, t- I'll tell you if they're any good. First one is I'll, my writing will be fuckable, unfuckable. Okay. A lot of people put pictures in the in the Facebook group, and a lot of people also didn't follow the rules. They yeah. were doing hot adult cartoon people. They're yeah. like, here's yeah, fucking yeah, this yeah, person from a hand. porn. No, no, they all look good in porn. What do you yeah. mean by adult? Oh, you mean like like I said, Archer Sterling Archer anime, is the hottest. Anime, anime. And you said I anime. thought you wanted like hot young ones, like no, Madeline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> illegal ones. We just want the illegal ones. <laughs> 
make it weird. Yeah, yeah. Amos comes in with one of the Rugrats. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy Pickles. All of the Rugrats. <laughs> Phil, Phil and Lil. Lil. Same <laughs> time. <laughs> he had a threesome with Phil and Lil. <laughs> I don't co-sign on what Kelly said. <laughs> it's what Amos did. I'm just saying what he did. Yeah, Amos did it. All right, give us some people. Give First one is from uh, Aeon Flux, which may fall in the anime category. Yeah, I think that's the anime, even though she was hot. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I want your Hanna-Barbera, your Looney okay, Tunes, your low... We got Ann Magrock from the Flintstones. Which Who's Ann Mag? Is, is that the boss's wife? I think it's Ann Margaret is an actress or whatever, and she came and did a guest role on the Flintstones. It's Ann Magrock. Oh. Ann Margaret in a day, she was a good sort. You see her dancing with Elvis, see an mm -hmm. affair with her, nothing wrong with her. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, Ann Magrock. Yeah. Ann hey, Magrock's pretty good. There you go. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, she was the uh, the boss's secretary that used to cause a bit of trouble. Yeah. You know what I'm saying about dress. who's hot? That, that, that reminds me of that gem in the holograms. Oh uh, yeah, gem. Gem's a good one. That, that was that was a group of hot mm -hmm. girls. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Josie Rock and fan. all the pussycats. Oh yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Yep, you gotta yep. get it so we can I shoot would, it up on the TV. I now. would Memories. orgy yeah, with just Josie and the pussycats all day. <laughs> We got April O'Neil from the Ninja Turtles. Yeah, yeah. but mm -hmm. she always with the yellow outfit and all that type of stuff. It's they don't now. have different outfits in yeah, cartoons. Yeah, cartoons always wear the same thing. <laughs> I know, but that's not a very sexy outfit. Uh, Marge in the blue Ooh. dress, I mean the green dress. Yeah, but at least you can hitch that up and have the, have your way. Uh. Not like you'd force yourself, but you would just have sex with her if she was into it, <laughs> right? And but the, the the teenage mutant ninja turtle one, you like, you got to zip it down to the bottom. I got to take me boots off now. Uh, you lose interest by the time she gets ready. Uh, we have the ant in Big Hero Six. I can't remember that one. Louise, have fun searching these. Oh, the ant. I was thinking of a bug. I was like, did what? anyone yeah, say the Tasmanian tiger in the movie Extinct? Not yet, but uh, we should yeah, add it to yeah. the list. That, that's you. Uh, that's me. <laughs> oh, that's the ant in Big Hero Six. I actually thought you were talking about an animal. Oh, so I thought you were talking about an aunt. Aunt. <laughs> yeah. 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 Aunt. 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 Big That's what I did too. Yeah, yeah. She's okay. And then we got Betty Boop, but they misspelled it and did Betty Boo. Why would anyone want that big round headed yeah. slag? <laughs> She's walking along. You get some big color. headed slag. Get some color into your skin, Holy love. Crap. <laughs> the, thing, <laughs> the, thing, the thing about the cartoons, though, is that they all look good. She's just good, Felix though. with tits. <laughs> <laughs> they all look good, though, because they're all kind of like filtered. They're almost, they have yeah. the like filter. So it's like, there's not like, try and find an ugly cartoon character. There's not that many. We might find, I think there's something here. Okay. All right, you would. You wouldn't give Fred Flintstone a go. He's, he's not bad. He's handsome. He's had sex with Gilbert Gottfried. He's got, he's he would got, have sex with. Yeah, he's got great skin. Yeah. What about what about the parrot from the Lion King? He must be right up here, anyway. No, not not animals. Mufasa? I don't have sex with animals. No, isn't the, the parrot? The parrot. Oh, Gilbert the parrot. Go, Gilbert Gottfried. I thought you said the parrot. I don't have sex no, with that's animals. in Aladdin. That's yeah, Aladdin. A Gilbert Gottfried, the parrot in Aladdin. The parrot in yeah. there. You wouldn't. Iago. You Idiot. wouldn't fuck the parrot in yeah, uh, the Lion so, King. That's so annoying. Gross. We got Carmen San Diego. Yeah. Seems yeah. too easy. We got Daphne from Scooby Doo, basic. Daphne. This is a good one. Daphne, yeah, yeah. Darkwing Duck. That's pretty good. Like Darkwing yeah. Duck? Darkwing Duck. I don't For, find ducks sexually attractive. I feel like mm. I feel like Felma. You don't like duck face? I, I feel like Felma. I don't want to you know, say anything, but I feel like she'd have a lot of political views, if you know what I mean. <laughs> and she probably wouldn't like Dave Chappelle's special. That's all I'm saying about Felma. <laughs> <laughs> you think she'd have purple hair now? A little nose yeah. ring. Hey, what, okay, you're describing me right now. Oh shit! Yeah. I, I used to have purple hair. Got the nose ring. And Kelly didn't got like strong, the special. Strong political. You were in my peripheral vision there. <laughs> 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 Fucking asshole. Someone said I would do Gumby. Yeah, yeah. he's stretchy. Mm, no, I wouldn't. No, Flexible. Is no, anyone yeah. like Kim Possible? Isn't she? Yeah, She's coming up. Said, I'm in alphabetical order. Yeah, Where are we up to G? Well, yeah, so this is a short. There's only so much time in this podcast. Ah, keep going. I'm loving yeah. this. <laughs> I'll go. I'll a rapid fire. We got Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy. Yeah, but they're yeah. meant to be. Someone said Jack is my favorite character. Huh. Thank you. I'm not I'm a Jack cartoon. and the Beanstalk. Yeah, do you probably. ever do that? Do you ever sex like that? Do you ever go? I wouldn't mind if you wrapped your hands around my Beanstalk. You should, I haven't, but maybe I should try you to should get on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta wait for her to text back first. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, we got Team Rockets Jesse from Pokemon. Yeah, that's pretty good. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Judy Jetson, which you yeah. guys talked about. We mentioned about. the Jetsons. Yeah. Uh, but people want to clarify oh, that she is 11 years old. Yeah, yeah, I said that. I said okay. that. I said, uh, no, we, we like Jane the wife. We yeah, changed Jane her. Jane the wife. Ding, 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 ding. ding. Uh, Kim Possible, there you go. Don't know who that is. Okay. 
We got Cora and her girlfriend. I think that's an tell Avatar me. thing. <laughs> <laughs> nah, we'll move on. She's, a, she's say, like a spy or yeah, something. That's the whole thing of the podcast, right? <laughs> I say I don't know about something and then you tell me. That's Kim Possible. Ah, fuck Kim Possible. The hair's too big. <laughs> You know, like the big hair? Oh, it's been doing a lot of heavy lifting for a shit personality, Kim Possible. <laughs> we got Lana Kane from Archer. Yeah, but that's an adult. Lola yeah. Bunny, basic. Yeah, but there's a cosplay. With, I don't know, she's young. Oh, hello, <laughs> nurse from the Animaniacs. Yep, yep. Nurse. I told you, a snorkel, man. Snorkel? Not snorkels. The ones with the snorkels. Snorks. Snork, snork yeah. yeah snork, I always like Revlon Lovejoy's wife in The Simpsons. I think she's the hottest in that show. Really? Oh. Yeah. We got some Simpsons coming up. She's very wholesome. Yeah, cause, but it's because you feel like, like you know, twins. you look like you could. Because the like, reverend's not giving it to her properly, yeah, you know. You're like you want to corrupt yeah. someone. That yeah, that feels very on brand. Oh my for you. god, the children! <laughs> you like that? Yeah, I like that. We got Robin Hood from the Disney movie. Robin Hood. Yeah, he's hot. The fox. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And then we have Rogue from the X Men animated series, but that's an adult. Mm. Now we're under the Simpsons. These are all adults, but I th- I think we'll count it. So this person specified for female, Marge Simpson, and then male, Ned Flanders. But in the theater episode. Ned Flanders looks a little like Luis, really. <laughs> Just because of the mustache. Nah, you give but it to the... But isn't he like, isn't he surprisingly like built when he takes his clothes how out? Like, does it, jacked yeah, 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 like, how the how does Homer Simpson sound in Mexico? Do they dub the voice or do you guys just watch it normal? Yeah, no, it's. I don't know if I could do the impression, but oh <laughs> no, that wasn't it. Oh, you sweet, you swept your full of peace. put the boat to boat. Ah, Bart. It's kind of like that. Oh, Bart. I can remember. <laughs> yeah, they just say, oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. <laughs> Yeah, and does and does the the uh, the bumblebee man? Does he sound like really eloquent? In- <laughs> Do they cut him? Very out? articulate. <laughs> I once was watching Telenuvo or whatever. I was just channel flicking in there. <laughs> Telemundo. Telemundo. <laughs> <laughs> and, and fuck me if there wasn't a guy in a bumblebee outfit. Was he a person before The Simpsons? Yeah. yeah. Or are they uh, taking the piss? Yeah, the Bumblebee man. I mean, there's there's very like similar stuff in general because there's there's like a late night talk show. It's a guy named Platanito, which means little banana. Yeah, <laughs> he's dressed as a clown. <laughs> um, that's like a show that's still going on today. It's fucking amazing though. All right, here's our last comment. Uh, they said, "I'd do Wilma, but I'd be thinking about Betty." Why don't you just do Betty yeah. and just think about her? But also, Betty. You remember it's Rosie O'Donnell in the movies. So. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, that's true. I do remember I that. once had a flight and it was me, Rosie O'Donnell, and Jeremy Piven sitting next to each other. Mm. <laughs> true. So, ragtag bunch right there. Yeah, true. <laughs> and we, and we, all, we all got along famously. Yeah. I'm not... <laughs> oh, gosh. All right, let's do some ads. Ladies and gentlemen, when it comes to meat, that'll be the centerpiece of your holiday meals. Quality matters. And when you invest in high-quality meat from ButcherBox, the benefits go way beyond great-tasting meals. ButcherBox sources their meat from partners with the highest standards and qualities. No more searching the grocery store for 100% grass-fed beef. I do that. I do that. And then they say grass-finished. It's in the meat section. It's worth that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, they say finished is like a thing that they sort of- What the heck's grass-finished? I don't know. I think think at the end they give them a bit of grass. (laughs) Enjoy that. (laughs) Uh, Free-range organic chicken, wild-caught seafood, and more. Their sourcing decisions are made holistically, keeping the farmer, the planet, and the animal, and your family in mind. I'm looking at Arnie right now. (laughs) He's a, he's a free range dog. He'd have lovely supple meat. He's meat finished. <laughs> Sit down. I've always hated Thanksgiving meals. Yeah. What do I always say, Jack? I hate them. That's what I say. Yeah, you do say that. Uh, for, but then you have them. Forget turkey. Give your guests some filet mignon Ooh. and lobster tails instead. And actually, why can't we do that? That's what of I do. Turkey. That's yeah. what I do. And enjoy the holiday. Now, I want to motivate you as an audience. Every month, Butcher Box Did ships. You just read that. Yeah. <laughs> Every month, Butcher Box ships and creates a selection of high quality meats right to your home. Free shipping for the continent. Continental US. I that, think the way they want you to motivate yeah. the audience They're is really talk about how, them. Yeah. No, no, how I much you I love the I meat. I didn't know what that meant, but that means Hawaii and uh, Alaska can go fuck themselves. <laughs> no, I think it's contiguous. I don't. I don't think they want. Oh no, that, they can do it too. All right. I don't know. 
There are no <laughs> antibiotics or added hormones. Each box contains between 8 to 14 pounds of meat, depending on your box. You, you said choose. this was going to be the best ad no, reading just, you've ever done. It's just funny the way you accentuate it. Pounds <laughs> of meat. That's enough for 24 individual meals or two if you're me. <laughs> not funny. Because I'm, uh, I'm a glutton. That's not this funny. holiday, Butcher Box is proud to give its new members free New York strip steaks for a year. Get Ooh. The, get, you yeah, don't, don't. And their, their steaks are so fucking Louise, good. Stop giving me things that aren't true. No one can afford to give free New York strip steaks for a year. No, it's true. What? It's true. Yeah. This deal has never been offered before and won't last forever because they're going to go bankrupt if they do this. <laughs> Get two delicious 100% grass-fed New York steak strips for free in every box for a year. Holy hell, Carolyn. This offer is only available till November 30th, 21. That's this year. Yeah, this year. Get in. Get in quick. That's today. That's today. It's today. Yeah. Hurry up. Oh. Hurry up. Hurry up. Get it. Get it. Get it. Today. So get it before it's gone. You want the New York strip? Oh, I want to give it to you. Get in there. Get it. Get it. Just go to butcherbox.com slash IDK to sign up. That's butcherbox.com slash IDK to receive this limited time offer of free New York strip steaks for a year. That is actually a very good offer. You should do yeah. that. Work attire has changed. The days of wearing uncomfortable business attire are up. Over. Don't, but you don't have to sacrifice style for comfort with Cuts Clothing. In 2016, Cuts founder Steve Borelli set out to create clothes ready for every occasion for the modern man that he faces. He started by reinventing the t shirt. The end result, <laughs> only what Q Magazine calls GQ. G. Q magazine's much different. Every time. Q magazine. Yeah, Q magazine's no good. No good. Q magazine is wearing different types yeah, of shirts. Yeah, choose from our adrenal line. Um, <laughs> what GQ magazine calls the only shirt worth wearing. And there's never been a better time to give cut clothing a try because Cuts is kicking off the holiday sales season early with 30% off site wide now through till December 3rd. So getting quick, December 3rd's Ooh, coming. That's the coming. All right. I love the cuts. I love them. Me and Jack golf in the cuts. Oh, yeah. And when we do, we smoke forest. You can't even get close to us because we're all cut up with the cuts. <laughs> That's right. The uh, signature buttery soft Picar Pro is one incredibly comfortable, is so incredibly comfortable. It's a bold new take on a classic design and you can wear it anywhere because it's professional enough to wear in the office and comfortable enough for working at home. Cuts has innovated the work leisure category so you can work anywhere confidently. <laughs> and it's not just shirts. They've got an exclusive collection of clothing for all occasions and seasons, including polos, bomber jackets, joggers, and more. I want a bomber Ooh, jacket. And more. Uh, ship again. Ship again. 2021 is coming. In preparation, Cuts is starting their sale season early for you. With thirty percent off, <laughs> some, with, with thirty percent off site wide, starting November 9th. So we're oh, already, we're in, already there. in there. You're already in yep. there. Three so you can have a worry-free holiday shipping. Head over to cutsclothing.com today and get thirty percent off site wide through December third, and upgrade your wardrobe with their world-famous shirts, joggers, and their all-new outerwear. That's cuts. C U T S clothing.com. All right, please welcome our guest, Rachel Watterson. And now it's time to play... Yes, no. Yes, no. Yes, no. Yes, no. Judging a book by its cover. Okay, ask Rachel some yes or no questions. How many is here to talk so about? Where you can guess. But. All right, Rachel, you, your room's got books. Uh, I know that much. So you've read. So you're not illiterate. <laughs> Uh, mm. so that means you'll probably, you got Apple iPods, so you support the Apple, so you're not, so your specialty isn't Samsung, so I can rule that out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, That's correct. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, see, I know things. Good problem. Almost there. Yeah. You, you've got a, you've got a, a, a tapestry on your wall that has four stars on it. Was that a review of something? Who knows? <laughs> um, That's the Chicago flag. Okay, okay. Do you work in education, Rachel? I do not. You do not work in education. Uh, do you work with the human body? Yes. Okay. Are you a doctor? I am not. Uh, well, you 
Uh, we also have known each other since high school. Oh, are you a volleyball player? <laughs> <laughs> I all. mean, if we count seventh grade, then yeah. yes, but no. Yeah. That's you, all he's got for you, Kelly. <laughs> volleyball? Oh, yeah. is your special, Kel- is Kelly's your, a one-note person. Is, is your specialty Diet Dr. Pepper tattoos and cigarettes? <laughs> I don't Damn. smoke cigarettes. <laughs> to be fair, I drank a Diet Dr. Pepper today, so, but no. Uh, okay. And you've known her since high school. How was that? That must have been fun. Um, uh, I'll give you a hint. Uh, this Think of women. Mm. <laughs> Are you a woman? <laughs> yeah. All right. Your specialty is women. Um, I was going to say, think of women. I was going to say, also something that you've recently experienced, but you didn't experience it this way. Oh, uh, your, your, uh, your, your um, C sections. Is your specialty C sections? Oh, why? You're thinking about childbirth. Like Hyper specific. Yeah, 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 well, yeah. I just had childbirth. It was yeah, natural. Yeah, you're, on the right, so you're on the right path. So is your specialty childbirth? Is it adoption? Not really. No. Oh, got it. You might know this. There's uh, some. If you knew anything else about me, it's, it's something fertility. That's, You're a fertility ah. person because Kelly sold eggs. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot sell eggs. You that's not how them. you phrase it, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> you don't eat them. There's an alleyway. There's a bag of money. <laughs> uh, we're at in vitro fertilization. All right, I know. I know. Uh-huh. But my brother just went through this. My brother and his oh, wife. They, they so should be having. Stuff. They should be having the baby today or something like. Oh, oh. Guess, yeah, about a week away. So they should be having it today. So IVF, as we'll probably refer to it a lot, and as through the questions. I think IVF is a good name for a porn star. Uh, oh yeah. Like oh wow. Ivy fucks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Or a drag queen I- IVF. Let me uh, introduce wow. Rachel here. Rachel Watterson has a Bachelor of Science in Animal Sciences, a Master of Science in Biomedical Sciences, with a concentration in clinical embryology and andrology. Uh, she has been an embryologist for 12 years, working in the United States, Australia, and currently in Germany. And she says her greatest accomplishment, making her nephew. What does that mean? Well, she uh, my brother and sister-in-law went through IVF to create their firstborn child. So... I made him. And, That's and very cool. They, did they go through IVF? So I hear there might be a second one if you said firstborn. Well, actually, they got pregnant naturally on their own during the pandemic. So, so they you didn't know, really one of those need you, did they? If they <laughs> no. If, if they just kept on fucking, it would have been fine. But you, <laughs> exactly. You, you were always over at the house stopping them from doing it. So. Or I was like, hey, guys, let me help, please. Yeah. <laughs> Knock on the door. Adam, can I have your sperm? <laughs> Uh, and how did you get into this field? What, what led you here? So, uh, when we went to high school, we had the option to take a genetics class instead of physics. And I took that class. We learned a lot about embryology. Someone came in who was an embryologist to speak to our class. And the day she left, I said, that's what I want to do. All right. Great. Yeah. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to ask Jim a bunch of questions about in vitro fertilization uh, we're going to see. That's good. I didn't know what it meant. So now I've answered the first question. <laughs> yeah, that's right. that is the first question. Uh, what is IVF? Uh, yeah, that's true. I should have just said IVF. Uh, <laughs> and then uh, when we're all done asking those questions, you're going to grade Jim zero through 10, 10 being the best on his accuracy of these questions. Kelly's going to grade him on confidence. I'm going to grade him on et cetera. If the total score is 21 through 30, IVF. 11 through 20, ICP. Mm. You know what that is? <laughs> no. Insane clown posse. Mm. Zero through 10, IBS. <laughs> Uh, Do you know what that is? Irritable bowel syndrome. Yeah, 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 that's the worst one. I was going to make the clown posse the worst one, but I felt like. I got along with the clown posse. Yeah. They're all right. I interviewed them. Yeah. What are their names? Uh, Bill and Ted. Sha- no, Shaggy. Shaggy to Dope. Ah, Shaggy to Dope. <laughs> shaggy to Dope. What am I saying You wrong? say Shaggy to Dope. Uh, that was, shaggy to Dope. That was yeah, one yeah. of my favorite podcast yeah. episodes ever. You're like, how? Uh, shaggy to Dope. Yes, Shaggy to Dope. What's the. <laughs> I, I still can't hear it. <laughs> And I'm then, saying Shaggy and to then dope. The other guy's name. <laughs> the other guy's name? Jay, but uh, Violent Jay. Violent Jay. We weren't allowed to call him Violent Jay, though. Do you remember? Yeah, he just goes by Jay. He, he was going through a custody hearing and he goes, oh, was he? That's what he said. He goes, oh, just, shit. just call us Jay on the show. It's like everyone knows your name's Violent Jay. It's Jay and Shaggy to dope. <laughs> <laughs> Do you sell their makeup, Kelly? Yeah. Right, it's in my car. Sell that, yeah. I know. <laughs> okay, Jim, what is IVF? Um in vitro fertilization. <laughs> nice. I was really hoping you forgot. <laughs> I thought no, you were I was going close, to. close, man. Well, Archaeopteryx. But what is that? Okay, what it is is when couples can't have babies uh, naturally and they need a little bit of help, what they do is the man will go come in a cup 
right? And then the woman will get an egg removed or the semen will be removed by a needle, which if the man's already had a vasectomy or something like that. Then the woman's egg will be taken out. Now, it could be the in vitro might have to happen because there's a low sperm count or the woman's not producing quality eggs or not enough eggs. And so what they do is they get the semen, they inject it into the egg in the same way that a sw sperm would swim through, and then they hope for the best. Now, the reason that the, with in vitro you get a lot of triplets and twins and stuff like that is because they put more sperm through there or they – or they may at other times put a few eggs up there at once, hoping that one of them will work, and then lo and behold, a few work. My favorite part of that answer was you said sperm, semen, and cum. You know, <laughs> all the different, different words for it. Yeah. <laughs> Ejaculate. <laughs> He's a thesaurus, this guy. Yeah, all-encompassing. Um, when is IVF needed? You kind of touched on yeah, that. It's needed when a couple, whether the guy yeah. hasn't had enough sperm, the woman's not producing good enough eggs. Um, and then sometimes I'm sure like, and this goes under the not producing great eggs or not enough eggs. Sometimes if the woman's a bit older, um, but it's mostly just for couples that are having a few issues to having, having babies and have explored all their other options. Are there any risks to having a baby through IVF? Um, uh, I know it's not fun. I know my, my, I can say this, my, my brother and not my sister, sex. my brother and my sister-in-law just went through it. And I can say this cause there was an article about them in a, a newspaper in Australia, um, um, yeah, I, I think there's a lot of needles and prodding and going to doctor's visits and things. And then also sometimes the egg takes and then, you know, you miscarriage and then you have to go through it all again. So I think a lot of couples, the risk is they go through a, a, a lot of ups and downs and hoping and praying and all that type of stuff. Okay. Uh, how does the process work? You, you see, I think you explained that in the first one. Yeah. We'll leave that as your answer. What is an embryo? Uh, an embryo is is when the baby is itty bitty tiny thing. When it just starts, the, the, it meshes with the egg, the semen in the egg, it makes an embryo. Uh -huh. Semen. Yeah. Okay. How are the eggs removed? Um, uh, I'm probably wrong here, but I'm going to assume it's the same vacuum they use for an abortion, but they turn it on low. <laughs> I don't think that's it. <laughs> How? It's, the same, <laughs> it's the same vacuum they use for liposuction. You, you can lose a few pounds, lose a baby. No, I, I, I don't. I, I assume there's some type. Of, there's pro, no, there's probably a pair of pliers. It would, it, it would be a circular, a circular pair of uh, barbecue tongs mm. and a vacuum. How many eggs are usually retrieved? Um, I think they remove retrieve as many as they possibly can, but I think like that, Easter. I think it's I think it's maybe four or five eggs. Okay. Um, I might be wrong, but this is the women only juice. I think actually I'm going to take that. I'm going to say one egg at a time. I don't know. Fucking four or five, seven, three. <laughs> Final <Yeah>. answer. <laughs> I'll go three. When should a couple look into IVF? Um, when they've been raw dogging for months and with no results. <laughs> <laughs> well, I say my I talk about this in my stand up. My my mother, um, my parents didn't go through IVF, but my parents couldn't have a child, and then they went. And they found out my mother's womb was twisted like a figure eight. And she had to have reconstructive surgery, which is a different thing. So IVF isn't always the answer, but it could be the answer. It could be the answer. It could just be that you need to fucking change something, open a canal up a bit more. I don't know. Maybe you got to ask some questions to the couple. Have you been putting it in the vagina? Oh, I haven't. Well, okay <laughs> then. I was hoping for mouth babies. <laughs> Who is eligible for IVF? Um, well, you've got to be over the age of 18. I'd be pretty sure of that, although I might not be able to. Um, any couple with a bit of money and some spare time. And what if the woman... <laughs> what, That's what, most things. Okay, okay. <laughs> Can you choose the sex of the child? Uh, I believe now you can, but I don't believe that they encourage it, and I don't believe. And I believe in many countries it's not legal, but I do believe you can. Okay, what is IUI, and how is it different uh, than IVF? Uh, in vitro fertilization. IUI. Yeah, I'm trying to. Uh, yeah. In. Up in. <laughs> uh, in. In up in. It's. It, <laughs> It's the instructions to have sex to have baby naturally. Oh, okay. In up in. Thought I was to find the G spot. <laughs> All right. What is the success rate of IVF? Oh, um, okay. Well, the, see, what what are you saying? Like couples who it works for eventually or for each egg? 
Well, think, for one process, like they would count that. Like, I, I, th- I think that most couples go through the, the process about two or three times. I'm going to say the success rate is about 30%. How much does it cost? Um, I don't know in this country, but I know, I, I, I think it's around 10 grand an egg. 10 grand and for the whole process or just the egg? Each or- time you have a go at it. Okay. How long does the procedure take? Ooh, it's longer than sex. <laughs> Uh, well, it depends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, sting. that's very subjective. Yeah. <laughs> it's longer than sex with me. <laughs> and it's shorter than uh, an episode of The Simpsons. <laughs> okay. Is the process painful? No, I, I think the process would take, or I, I think the actual process of removing the eggs, the coming in the cup and all that, I, I'd give you... <laughs> I'd give yourself a couple of hours. I, I'd, 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 bl- I'd block the whole afternoon off. <laughs> Simpsons movie. <laughs> yeah, Simpsons movie. Okay. Yeah. Uh, is the process painful? You sort of touched on this. I, I, I remember seeing photos of my sister-in-law and uh, the bruises around the stomach and stuff. There's Ooh. things that are definitely injected mm. in there. And, uh, yeah, I, I don't believe it's a fun process, no. At what age should women- I think the men enjoy it. I think that's good. <laughs> Just a bit of quick peace and quiet. <laughs> Fuck, you know. Well, you uh, wouldn't enjoy it if you, I don't know if you're right because I don't know anything about this, but you said that if they've had a, a vasectomy, yeah, they have to get that's it out That's different. If, yeah, they, if you've had a vasectomy, they don't reverse vasectomies very much anymore. What they do is they put a needle in the nut and they pull the nut. The, that doesn't the, sound fun. They, they pull the nut juice out. I don't know if that's out. real. Nut juice. I'm a thesaurus. <laughs> nut juice? I've never heard of that They one. pull the nut juice out, <laughs> okay. the, the baby batter, <laughs> the baby batter, if you will. Yeah, baby batter. And they, uh, <laughs> they pull that out and into a syringe and then they, they nut juice the egg. Boom. <laughs> you think anyone's ever said nut baby juice. batter, if you will? Like, like, <laughs> I don't think so. Baby batter. At what age should women consider freezing their eggs? Like if I'm not ready for How good yet. looking is this woman? <laughs> <laughs> Just women. Just women, All enjoy- women. I think if you want to freeze them, I think you should consider free. Like I, I, I think 35 would be a good age to if you, you know, if you're not dating someone. Are the results better when you use your own egg slash sperm versus donor egg sperm? I would believe that they are better because okay, so so you've got like when someone's a surrogate and they carry someone else's egg and a thing like that. I, I, I never hear them going terribly wrong, but I, you know, it's not like I talk to people about it. Um, I, would, I would say that your genetic pool would match better with your egg. So I, I, I think the sperm's inconsequential. You can use any man's sperm. You can bring that to the table and put it in the woman's. It's not like, it's not like the woman's body goes, but this is my husband's sperm. <laughs> no, no, no. I think any sperm can do the job and uh, the egg uh, would be better if it was your own egg. Eggs are polyamorous. I believe that I, 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 it might be a fine line. Actually, I'm going to say it makes no fucking difference. Fuck it. No difference. Is that your voice for a woman's body, by the way? What? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no I, never, I don't know. Just impressions. It wasn't the body going, it makes no difference. Put it in me. Okay, last question. How did Octomom have eight children through IVF? Um, I believe that she had, she put too many eggs in her at once. I believe that she really stockpiled and put a whole heap of eggs up her at once to try to. She uh, did it. She did it. Yeah. Well, no, she got, (laughs) she she, she got someone to do it. She she literally put all of her eggs in one basket. Let's put it that way. (laughs) All of her eggs in one womb. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Jack just said chubby mm. bunny, like the, the mar- marshmallow game, but for eggs. <laughs> um, all right, Rachel, uh, how you doing? How did Jim do? Zero through 10, 10 being the best on his knowledge of IVF. I'll be honest with you. I'm really upset that I have to give this answer, but I'm going to give him like an eight. Damn. Yeah, she, t- she texted me. She's like, God damn, Jim knows too much. <laughs> Wow. It's egg and it's sperm and it's a cup and a thing and a needle. <laughs> yep, that's it. It's a tail that's all the time. <laughs> this is I could do it. Rachel, if you keep- gave me all this stuff. I reckon. Uh, get me the tongs. Yeah, yeah. And the vacuum. Rachel, keep in mind yeah. with your score. He also said that it comes out with a vacuum turned. The same vacuum for an abortion <laughs> turned on low. I'll be honest with you. It was the abortion vacuum that. Took him down a notch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, nine. I was going to get a ten. And then he's going to run out of abortion vacuum. <laughs> He'd never gotten a ten, so that would have yeah, been amazing. Yeah, it wouldn't have happened. Uh, yeah. How do you do on confidence? He's definitely so. confident. I'll give him an eight on confidence <laughs> as well. Okay. Um, I'm with in beat, try. I know a little bit of beat. That's an eight plus We're an eight, 16. Uh, I'll give you a one, et cetera. You're shaggy to dope. All right, shaggy to dope. Yeah. <laughs> um, I still don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> it Say like- the number two. Shaggy, yep. too dope. Too dope. There you go. 
Shaggy to dope. <laughs> <laughs> when you, when you say like, it quickly, you, it sounds like sounds you're like saying T apostrophe to dope. dope. To dope. To dope. To dope. Yeah, there you to go. To dope. Go. Like true dope. dope. All right, Shaggy to dope. Let's get to our episode. I'm saying, I'm saying that. Yep. Sorry, Rachel. Um, That's okay. It's just him being from the northern beaches of Sydney because right. they can't help but to Ooh, yeah. to drop letters and words. Yeah. It's not just what, what, that's the area of Sydney where we drop words. The whole country does it. <laughs> well, it is the whole country. It's just the only place that I really have any experience, so I can't <laughs> did, speak to did, the whole. Where did you stay in the northern beaches? Where did you rock um, Well, I was working in Maroubra, but I was living in Coogee. Oh, Coogee. They Those drop their real. fucking words all day. Those. <laughs> <laughs> Boom, waka, waka, boom, waka, waka, boom. When the moment for intimacy arrives, <laughs> you need to be ready. Roman ready. <laughs> Whether you've been in a relationship for years, which uh, is probably why you need this, or just getting started, having the confidence that comes pre- with preparation means that you're free to enjoy the moment when the moment comes. <laughs> Come. <laughs> Even though you are far from ordinary, the truth is that ED is really common. In fact, 52% of guys aged 40 to 7 experience some form of erectile dysfunction. Go to getromans.com slash IDK now and speak to a U.S. licensed healthcare professional about erectile dysfunction and you'll get $15 off your first month of treatment. $15, well, you get the $15 back, but you can't afford not to do this. No, yeah. Really? You it's it's a, a marriage saver. Uh, Roman Ready is confidence personified. Never thought I'd be able to read that word. <laughs> it is a self-assurance that comes with knowing that you, you prepared yourself for the moment when intimacy arrives. With Roman, you can get a free online evaluation of ongoing care for erectile dysfunction, all from the comfort and privacy of your home. AUS. AUS. Oh, yeah, I thought it was Australia. <laughs> a US licensed healthcare professional will work with you to find the best treatment plan if medication is appropriate. It ships to you for free with two-day shipping. The whole process is straightforward, convenient, and discreet. Get started. Getting started is simple. Just go to getroman.com slash IDK and complete the online visit. Take care of your ED without leaving a home. Complete an online visit today at con- and uh, <laughs> complete an online visit today to connect with a U.S. licensed healthcare professional and take care of it. Go to getroman.com slash IDK today and get your pres- um, prescription. Get $15 off your first month of ED treatment. Make sure you're ready to have confidence and control this fall. Roman ready. Hey, we all know this about me. Big reader. Yeah, huge. Yep. Big reader. Big reader. Um, I read three. Always in a book. I read uh, in a book. <sighs> I don't even know what you look like, Forrest. I can only see the pages on the top of your head. (laughs) I read three books a month. All right, you got me, you got me, you got me. I listened to three (laughs) books this month, and that's a record for me, and it's only been made possible with Scribd. With Scribd, you get an instant access to millions of e-books, audiobooks, magazines, and more. You also get thoughtfully curated editor's picks and smart recommendations based on what you've read, which makes choosing your next book that much simpler. Now, uh, look, I'm not much of a reader Mm-mm. and I'm you're meant to read to your son, mm-hmm. right, all that type of stuff. What I do is I just put script on there, let or him have like, the audio book. Get in bed with him, yeah, have no. somebody else no, read no, to no, you guys. No, 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 I just put it on and then I, <laughs> then I, you leave, the room? I leave the house and go drinking. <laughs> <laughs> Bedtime of the Sun has become so much simpler. We both get comfy and we listen to a nice woman read us this book. <laughs> a book before bed. Sometimes I fall asleep before him. The system works perfectly. With Scrib, the world's most fascinating library is at your fingertips, all for just $999 a month. No, no, no. That's too much. <sighs> What, for all the books in the world? I think that's too cheap. I think it's uh, $9.99. What? Under $10, guys. No. That is a good deal. That is a good deal. That's less than the cost of a book, I assume. How, <laughs> how do they manage to take make all this available for so cheap? With Scribd, you can access the largest digital library in the world from your favorite device. Automated suggestions and hand-curated picks are choosing your next book it makes choosing your next book easier than ever. Easily switch between titles, genres, and formats right from the app and discover must-read New York, uh, new work, I thought it was New York, new work from celebrated authors like, oh, I didn't know they had Roxane Gay. 
Did you know that? Yeah. I don't know. I just, I just got Jack's the Bible. A big you know what would be You're cool? You're a big Charles U guy, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they got Charles Huge. U and more premiering, premiering exclusively on Scribd. What did you want to say? What if, we, what if you could get Scribd to read your ads for us? No one would ever write it in this <laughs> rhythm. <laughs> Right now, Scribd is offering our listeners a free 60-day trial. So go to try uh, <laughs> go to try.scribd.com slash Jim for your free trial. That's try.scribd.com slash J I M to get 60 days off Scribd for free. Um so IVF, what can you give us an explanation of what IVF is? Jim said in vitro fertilization, couples can have a baby naturally. But let's this podcast really falls down when I know everything. <laughs> Well, I think she'll. I, 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 I think there's a lot of detail that we missed. Uh, I think she'll explain it a little bit better. Oh, she won't say come yeah. in a cup. Let's maybe cut maybe to, she will. Let's cut to the chase. Do they give the man porn, or is the room soundproofed? What goes on there? How about we start with <laughs> there, what, what is IVF? Yeah. Okay. Okay. We, we can start there. Yeah. I'll work the rest of it in. Yeah. Um, so IVF, yes, correctly, is in vitro fertilization. It's usually when a couple or person decides that they'd like to have a child and it's the most aggressive form of therapy that we can offer in fertility. And so that's usually what you hear of, although IVF commonly by society is it's a it's a broader picture than just the most aggressive form, which is actually in vitro fertilization. Okay. Um, and then, so when is IVF needed? Jim says, guy doesn't have enough sperm. Women not producing great eggs. Women is a bit older. <laughs> Couples having issues. Yeah, there are a lot of reasons that can cause infertility. So even if like your thyroid hormone level is wrong for a woman, it means you might not be ovulating and you can't get pregnant on your own. Mm. So you might not need IVF for that per se, but usually it's more than one thing in conjunction together, like endometriosis or you know, your hormones being off or male sperm count being low. So it's about, they say 40% of the time it's the woman, 40% of the time it's the man, 20% of the time it's probably both. Mm. It, mm. That's good to know, actually. What does low sperm count mean? Like, is there a number? I know what it means. Yes, there's a number. Yeah, so you should in your ejaculate have... Hold on, I'll do it for you. A, <laughs> about it's counting. 15 million um, sperm per milliliter. Mm. That's so many. Whoa. Wow. Yeah, yeah, milliliter. Oh, I'm sorry, just 15 million sperm. So yeah, no, no, no. I, no, I know milliliter. Yeah, not per milliliter. I'm, I'm feeding a baby at the moment. We're trying to get three milliliters into him every feed. That's so I know yeah. sperm. So you I'm get not it. sperm. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> but I know the exact measurement we're dealing with right now. I, I, I see. Oh, yeah, definitely. But obviously, every man's ejaculate is a different volume. So that's why we have to. I, I tell you, me and the Nugent men, which is my real name, we produce a hell of a lot of sperm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I used to You're watch probably one of those patients that I process the sample and I always like feel extra sorry for the woman. Why? <laughs> Why a high volume? That's like the most aggressive, <laughs> off-putting thing what it could be. No, they love it. Their head, <laughs> their oh, head they kicks do? back like a giant <laughs> cane. <laughs> No, what are you talking about? Buddy, I'm like Peter North, me. <laughs> Peter I'm like, North. Yeah. Oh, I tell God. you, I used to watch these people go, you seen this Peter North guy? He had big cum loads right when I was a kid. And I was like, that's nothing. I get <laughs> I get distance as well. I get a shit ton of distance. Several times, and I used to talk about this on stage, several times I have masturbated and then, you know, you open your mouth, and you go, oh, you're coming, and I fucking shot myself right in the mouth. <laughs> Just from the back. I have had a big watermelon come shoot my mouth more times than I can count, and I can count past seven. Right? I have he my headboard. My headboard always has come on it. Any hotel room I'm in has got come on it. And that's not because I've been going up against the fucking headboard. It's because it's shot over me fucking head. Jeez. I'm telling you. Never staying in a hotel I think again. you could make a lot of money probably just based on this. That, that's our new Patreon tier. I, I, I tell, I, I tell Jim you what, comes hard. Jim North. I, I can do a Jew North. I can any direction you want. <laughs> Jew North? Jew North. The North. hard thing is, Jew though, North. if you have Jew a North. high volume like that, oftentimes the sample is very, very diluted. So you tend to... You can potentially have a low sperm I count and not so realize much calm it. that a lot of the eggs have drowned. Mm. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's the problem. 
Um, He's down to a seven now. <laughs> are there risks to having a baby through IVF? Jim said it's not fun. Needles, prodding, doctor's visits. Yeah, I mean, that part of it is all true. I mean, but that's true whether you get pregnant or you don't. So the actual risks that can be increased that studies have found are that IVF babies sometimes have a lower birth weight, but oftentimes I think that's more related to the fact that older women tend to go through IVF. And so that's already in their age category going to be an issue that they can have. Is that because all, things like that. Is that because older women eat less because they gain weight quicker? Oh my god! No, I, mean, I can't believe everyone just looked at me like, no. I didn't even make eye contact I, I with you. I, I, just, no. I didn't think about it. I just heard Kelly, and then I looked at you. So. <laughs> but is that the reason? No, it's not. It's usually due to premature deliveries, so the body just doesn't hold babies as well as you I, get older. I, had, I, I don't think I'm saying anything out of line. I don't think my wife being we, we my, our little boy. We just had the placenta stopped working, so we had to come out mm. a, a couple of months, well, a bit more than a month. Uh, early and he's a little tiny fella and uh, my wife's not old I made sure of that oh but she's tiny she is tiny, she's tiny. yeah she's tiny yeah that is true she when she when she was pregnant she just looked like ET <laughs> she just had like a little pot belly on her the rest of you couldn't I hope she doesn't listen you to couldn't this tell from behind yeah I, you're like I don't think my wife would be angry about anything <laughs> I'm saying she looks like ET <laughs> yeah she does she's got a big long neck on her um <laughs> She's always trying to use the phone, but I won't let her. Um, <laughs> Next week, our episode's about divorce. <laughs> no, she doesn't listen to the podcast. She gets enough of me at home. That's good. My wife never listens to this. That's my, good. My mother-in-law listens to the fuck out of it. Hi, Becca. <laughs> she was on the podcast yeah, a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, that's two ET references in a row, two two episodes in a row. You had Speak and Spell last episode. So oh, see yeah. if you can go for three next All week. All right, I'll get it done. Um, <laughs> how does the process work exactly? Because I, I, I don't really... Yeah, the process is really interesting. So the woman has to go through a whole lot of um, diagnostic testing before they're able to get to the IVF stage to kind of figure out why uh, they need IVF. And traditionally, couples have tried for about a year before they should be seeking infertility help. So usually there's a reason you've given it a lot of goes and it's not working. Um, So that is all based on their cycle. So they have to come in and do blood work on certain days to check their hormone levels. The guys, Jim nailed it. They come in a cup. We <laughs> check that sperm. We see if there's enough, if it looks funny, if there's anything odd with it or out of textbook norm. Um, and then within the next month or so, usually the women start to be medicated. Um, one of the medications that they're on actually shuts down the brain's ability because Usually in a a natural cycle, the woman produces a lot of eggs at the beginning of the cycle. And then the body chooses one, sometimes two. That's the case of twins, usually fraternal twins. Um, And the body chooses one or two to ovulate that month. So Mm. they pick the ones that will grow big and mature so that the sperm can possibly fertilize the egg. Um, In IVF, what we do is we shut down the brain's ability to do that. So we grow as many eggs as we can on the ovaries. So you only have to go through the procedure one time, hopefully. And we can weed out and be more selective with which embryos end up developing the best. When Um, shutting down a woman's brain, does that take a long time or is that a fairly (laughs) easy? I'm going to get canceled this week. I can't help it. (laughs) Amos is here. He's such a bad medication we use. There's only one small thing that gets kind of shut to baseline. So no, it doesn't take that long, but the shots in general usually take at least two weeks, sometimes a month, depending on the protocol and the patient. All right. Okay. I thought you were going to say that. When they said the, come in they a go cup, through the do, surgery. do they, I, I did it once and they used, mm. they got me one of those uh, Starbucks venti cups. Big gulp. Big gulp. Big gulp. See you later. Big gulp cup. I always love that about big gulp cups. Remember when like the big gulp cup was just a cup? And then, like, like they had your cup holders in a car. By the way, how long did it take society fucking to put them in? Yeah. That didn't come in until the fucking early 90s. We'll put a cup holder in. Revolutionary, right? But then they had the big gulp, and then what they did was, oh, it won't fit in the car cups. So they made the big gulp big, and then they made the bottom small yeah. so it still fit in. 
Fucking science. I hearing the word gulp. <laughs> we're hearing the word gulp when I think about it in as it pertains to a big cup of cum is uncomfortable. A big, yeah, exactly. Big That's gulp. what I'm talking would about. You, with would, the you high ra- would you rather like, it's called bad. a slurpee? <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. You'd rather, <laughs> you'd rather slip, come than gulp, come. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I mean, you got yeah. it, it's it's a better way to taste. You, you, you're sending the podcast in the wrong direction. We're talking about medical science. <laughs> this is why my dad won't listen to this podcast. <laughs> this is the only reason he knew the big gulps were coming. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so then when when we get to the surgery part of it, what's that process like? So then once once the follicles have grown big enough, which are the little cysts essentially that the eggs grow on. Mm. And the ovary, it's like oh, a I didn't know that there was there's cysts that the eggs grow on. Yeah, so like basically a follicle on an ovary is just a fluid filled pouch. So it it's a lot like a cyst, mm. except the difference is there's actually an egg inside of it growing. So the fluid pouch kind of protects the egg while it's on the ovary still. Is that why women always get uh, cysts on their ovaries? Every girl I meet it, has had a cyst on their ovaries. It feels like it's a very common thing. <laughs> um, it can be really, really common and certain types of birth control can actually increase the amount of cysts that people have sometimes. So that could be part of it as well. Mm. Um, that, that, you, there was a nice face you made there when he said every girl he meets. Has <laughs> on I've, met a lot of, I've met more. Every than, girl that you've met that you, you've dated. That I've talked to. Uh, everyone that you've talked to. Huh? Yeah, no, I, I'm not just going, you've probably had cysts. I don't do that. <laughs> But I, I hear it. I, I hear it. Bro- I hear it brought comment. up a lot. I hear it brought up a lot. I've, I've met several people. Well, most women don't even know they have them. Oh, so maybe every woman you have met does have cysts. Yeah, exactly. Right. I would be shocked if they it's knew just, that. It's just when but... I come, I actually shoot them off because it's so powerful. <laughs> maybe that's it. You pressure pop washer. Them. <laughs> <laughs> now, Rachel, I have a question because uh, there's. There's when you ask how many eggs a woman has, a lot of people say like a woman is born with all the eggs they're going to have. But is it isn't it more so like they're born with hundreds of thousands of follicles that can be stimulated to produce eggs? Or so you you are actually physically born with all of the eggs that you will ever, ever have in Uh your life. And Mm. they just go downhill, just like everything else as you get older as a woman. Um. But what you're saying is also true because like you, the follicles change every month on your ovary, but the eggs are deep in the tissue. So okay. the follicles just kind of grow as the eggs start to come to maturity. Now, does, does men's sperm decrease as we get older? Is that the, I'm, um, I yeah, assume there it are would. Some, yeah, there are some more recent studies now saying that like aging, it used to always be assumed that aging in men never caused fertility issues because the numbers don't always go down for men, but as your testosterone decreases over time, usually your sperm count goes down as well. But more and more, the problem with men and aging is that the DNA of the sperm they're finding degrades over time. So that's why there's a higher instance of like autism with older fathers. Well, I heard this, yeah. And and is it more chance of Down syndrome and stuff? There's a few different things. Uh, It's not necessarily Down syndrome, but what we, what they have found a link to definitely is autism. Right. Could that be why we have an, this might, I don't know if you can speak to this, why we have an increase in autism in our society because people are having children later? It could be part of it. I'm also, this is just a personal opinion of the mind that we can recognize it easier now than we were able to 20 years ago. So it's more diagnosed because yeah, right. we, we know more that there's a spectrum, but I mean, yeah. Because my kid goes to a fancy school in Hollywood and I'm a fucking 44 and I'm like the youngest dad there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like, like in this town, man, the, the, the dads are old. <laughs> So there is, there are techniques that we can do in IVF now to decrease uh, the chance of choosing a sperm that has a high amount of DNA degradation. Um, But other than that, I mean, you can't test for autism in sperm or embryos or eggs. Can you test for anything in sperm? Can you swirl it around with a little stick and if it comes out pink, you're going, oh. You gurgle it a little bit. Yeah, this has got (laughs) some fancy ass sperm here. This one's no good. Mm. This one's wearing a top Mm. hat. (laughs) (laughs) Um, You can, so sperm is actually the determination of whether a fertilized egg will be, have um, an XY chromosome or an XX chromosome because they actually carry the X or Y chromosome that is determining. So you can test for that 
but not as you're actively using the sperm. So you would have to give like a sample, have that tested to have an overall general view of what now, you might be working now, with. Here, so would you say 15 million sperm in a milliliter? Was that what 15 million is what we said? 15 million, 15 is, million. is the bottom. 15 million. End, yeah. Okay, so 15 million. So it's only one sperm that gets through. Are all those sperms in that shot, are they all genetically the same and then a diff- another shot's different or all 15 million got their own unique fingerprint? Mm. No, they've all got their own unique fingerprints. Mm. That's a great question. We did an episode on genetics. <laughs> that is a really good people question. People get surprised when I ask good question. Yeah. Well, what I was going to say Put that one up on the board. We, we, <laughs> we did an episode on genetics not too long ago where he did answer that question for you. And it, I retained something. Uh, mm, sort of. Not <laughs> really. <'cause laughs> I never would have thought to ask it at all. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe that's, that's what yeah, it that's was. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, uh, where are we at? What is an embryo? Jim said when the baby is itty bitty tiny thing. Yeah. Yeah, so an embryo is anything technically um, from the stage of a zygote, which is a fertilized egg, all the way up until really it's the definition is until like tissues and organs start to be formed. Um, so usually that's around like nine, nine weeks of pregnancy. Mm, okay. And then how are the eggs removed? Here we go. Uh, the same vacuum they use for an abortion, but they turn it on low. Nailed it. Pair of pliers. That's, that's on high. <laughs> circular pair of barbecue tongs. These are all the answers. Yeah, Yo, I, I have nothing to add to that. Jim was 100% right. Oh, <laughs> uh, no, I, I, left out, I left out the hair straightness. <laughs> um, they so they wind it up and procedure. make it warm. Yeah. Oh, God, that sounds awful. <laughs> <laughs> my vagina's burning. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you ever, you ever see wow. a vagina with long, silky hair? You know where it's been? <laughs> So uh, the egg retrieval process is a surgical procedure. So the woman does go under anesthesia usually. um, And there is an ultrasound probe with a long, long needle attached to it that is um, enters the body vaginally. And then the needle pierces through the vaginal walls to access the ovaries and be able to aspirate the follicles off of the ovaries. Now, Kelly, as someone who has done this, mm-hmm. um, did is it is the recovery painful? Do you even know it's happened to you, or were you just like, I was knocked out today? <laughs> the anesthesia is great. You wake up from a really oh, nice so nap. Good. <laughs> um, but I mean, I I've definitely had difficulty. Like the last one I did fucked up my body. I gained a hundred pounds in a year because it destroyed some of my organs. But um, but other than that, most of the recovery was very easy, unless you overstimulate the follicles sometimes, like or. The first time I ever did it, they told me to be on like bed rest, but I felt fine. So I moved around a little bit and then I was dealing with some cramping. But other than that, it's. Uh... So if you've donated, I won't say the amount, but a number of things. So so genetically, there's a number of children that are, you're genetically their mother. Pop, I mean, the only the only success I know of because it, it's anonymous, right? So I know that I have twins out there that they're about 11, but that's because I went through a big situation where we ended up getting in touch. I worked for the guy for a couple of years. He sent the cops to my house. It was a big thing. Um, but yeah, I've got twins. I'm glad you just breezed over the cops. <laughs> so, yeah, it's so, a wild so, story. It's a okay. wild story. It's on so, my Instagram so highlights. You, Go check it so out. So you have uh, these kids genetically. I'm not saying that you want to. I, I, by the way, I think it's a beautiful thing that you did. I think it's it's lovely that you've given people who couldn't have children this big opportunity. What a great gift. Thanks. Um, but are you fearful because you like younger men that in about six, seven <laughs> years, you're going to go, mm, I like this guy. He's sort of tall. Yeah. He's sort of, he's got his volleyball. Yeah, he's got a good look to him, this fella. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. like younger men. <laughs> you like all men. Yeah. I don't know. I I'm would just say saying, I, I'm just I, saying I'm it like to get to the like gag <laughs> quicker. I'm just saying it to get to the joke. Yes, maybe I'll fuck my son. Is that what you want me to say? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying it could happen. What will you well, do when well, this does happen? There, there is, there, is, there are restrictions on how many donations a donor can do in any given area because they want to make sure that if these kids grow up, that they're not meeting each other and reproducing, not knowing that they're genetically linked. Right, but if you got someone in Chicago and then you've got someone in New York, that's they can still meet. It's still not out of the realm. Right. But it's, it's a lot more probable if you're doing them all in the same region and people meet each other in school or something. What like you should have done is just that one in each continent or just done some of them in North Korea and some of them here. Cause mm-hmm. they'll never meet. I each did other. one in India. Did you? Yeah. But it was for a Canadian couple. Oh, right. Right. So like the Indian family walking around with the blonde kid going, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, um, that being said, Kelly, there is what I see I see as a possible issue leading toward 
doing anonymous donations and where your embryos end up because unless you specify it in a contract, um, oftentimes that couple can offer to donate those embryos that were created like feasibly with your egg right. um, to another anonymous couple. So uh, then the cycle of donation doesn't end and you it becomes very, very difficult to start right, okay. track. So, uh-huh. so, so I, I, have a, I have a friend who's a gay fellow who has a, a, a couple of kids and he bought the eggs and both the kids are – Full sisters because they bought the he bought bought it from the same person, right? So when they buy the eggs, do yeah, I assume there's a facility where they keep him. You don't get like a freezer in your house no. or anything. There is a facility, <laughs> right? Yeah, cooler, right? Yeah. It's like Jurassic Park. But people would buy people would buy multiple of yours because they want to have multiple kids. And they want them all to be the same. Well, are you yeah. mean, you mean in multiple? Unless the first one turns out shit, and they go. We're going with other eggs. They're like, you know what? We got to switch something up here. <laughs> do you mean in in one session or in multiple times? Like, do they? Let's say I was to have a child, and then I might want to have another child in two or three mm. years' time. Do I buy the two eggs now and have one left in a freezer so that my kids will all be genetically the same, or or can I only buy one at a time? Rachel, you want to speak to this? Yeah. So, I mean, even Kelly, since you've done your donations, the field has changed quite a bit. So it used to be your egg donor had to go to the clinic and be seen at the clinic and have her procedure done at the clinic that you, your physician was at. Um, and then the eggs would be there on site and they would get fertilized and grow them into embryos. And maybe you transfer an embryo and then you have a bunch to freeze. Then you're set for future birds of biological siblings. However, now there's a big push to doing um, egg donor banks. And so they, like you're saying, Jim, they freeze a batch of eggs on a woman who probably does several retrievals. And then, yes, if if that batch is still available later on, you can buy another cohort is what they call wow. them from the same donor. Um, but the problem is if, you know, you have a child and then in 10 years you decide to want another biological child, number one, those eggs have probably been sold and that donor is now too old to really be donating her eggs with very much success. Right, right, right. right. Um, but yeah, so yes, you can do that. And people do it with donor sperm all the time, all the time too. And if you're really, really certain about something, sure, you and you have a lot of money, you can buy an entire lot and it sounds terrible to refer to them like it's plasticware. But right. you get like six <laughs> okay. in a box, like regular. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Baker's you can buy dozen. like six eggs, six frozen eggs from a donor cohort, and but usually there's several more from that one donation. Now, you gotta make sure so, they're not cracked. So, when you buy them, though. You gotta look at them. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's a real serious issue. So, so, so you donate these eggs. You don't get paid anything. Nothing. Oh no, you get paid. What? Oh, you do get paid. No, you get paid a lot. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Well, I didn't know. That. Okay, donations. Okay, so, so how much do you get for donating a bit of sperm? It's always fascinating me whenever I see a movie, and they always go, "And he's a Harvard Oxford graduate who is an an astronaut, right?" I'm like, "Why is this guy coming in a cup then?" <laughs> so a lot. This of guy's times, an NBA actually, player. Why is he bothering? A lot of times, actually. Um, med students, there's usually a fertility clinic nearby their medical school. And it's an easy way to make like an extra, maybe $50, honestly. Um, but I think that, you know, back when uh, sperm donation was new, it was oftentimes medical students. So that bio is probably not that inaccurate. Oh, and then they become, um, they then become they be, successful. Yeah, exactly. Successful. Then eventually they yeah. can say they graduated and are doctors they, But they could whatever. be like a whole lot of frat boys. Who yeah. Are just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then yeah. If, you're, if you're playing co- college basketball and you're not making any money, you're like, oh, so we'll they're in some sperm and now you're in the NBA. If they're, so get, like, if they're getting 50 bucks and I have the quantity that I have, <laughs> would they would they separate my coming? <laughs> would they separate my coming to two cups? And could I get like eighty bucks? Like I'm not asking for a hundred bucks. So, I don't want to. No, it's they're gonna pay you per ejaculate. Um, they're not gonna pay. That doesn't you seem per fair at all. <laughs> right, it should be by volume. Yeah, it should be by yeah. volume. I have so few you know skills. What? I'm gonna work on changing changing the donor bank there policy you for next, you. When, next time I see you, well, I've never seen you in person, but when, if I ever <laughs> see you in person because your friend with Kelly at a party or something like that, I'm going to duck off to the room. I'm going to come back with a cup. <laughs> and, and, and you're, and you're going to go, you I love it. This, is, this is the thing that'll end up getting Jim canceled. And it's like, I just wanted to show an embryologist my cum. 
<laughs> yeah, and, no, it's, it's not like the old days where I could do it like three times a day. If I've had a wank that day, I'll be like, oh, I can't show you. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> right, but if I've had a, if I've had a bit of a dry patch, I'll come back with a fucking a big cup, big gulp. <laughs> yeah. How many? What's most upsetting to me is that like if that were to happen, I wouldn't find it weird yeah. because like that's just the field that I'm in. She loves cum. Well, that's good. It's, it makes it less awkward for me. <laughs> hmm. how, how many eggs are usually retrieved when they are retrieved? With this needle. It is totally dependent on the patient. So sometimes it's one and for some patients it's like 50. It, it depends on so what right. your, what your infertility diagnosis is and also your age and your egg reserve essentially. And so it's totally different, but they say the average is around eight to 10. I, I got it. I, there's, there's a term that, um, that the medical people have to stop using when it comes to older women who have, because I've had a baby with someone who is slightly older than me, you know, those stuff. But, but uh, oh. a geriatric, geriatric pregnancy. Ah. Fuck me if they're not already going through enough being pregnant and all that <laughs> stuff without using the word geriatric as a medical term. A geriatric pregnancy. Why do you do that? And how can we stop you? <laughs> Listen, it's not my choice. Um, so let me just clear my name with that right now. <laughs> but you, you, you get um, what I'm saying. Super, it seems super. Yeah, it's so upsetting. And to be honest, like, I don't have any children, but if I were to have one now, I would be considered a geriatric pregnancy. Yeah, to be, and that to be, makes me want to cry. To be 35 years old and yeah. someone's calling you a geriatric. <laughs> when does it start? When you start becoming geriatric? I think it's like 35. 35. 35. Wow. It's called a geriatric pregnancy. Those old women are oh, like yeah. 35 years old. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty now a lot of times they won't actually refer to it as geriatric but it is still called advanced maternal age so that's not <laughs> yeah, great yeah. Yeah, do, they, do they ever do jokes where they go down there and come up with cobwebs oh <laughs> You know, um, I've never done that joke, but it, so it sounds here. like it'd be a hit. It's a, it's, a, it's a good one to do around Halloween. Yeah, it's a Halloween, I wouldn't do a it Halloween all year transfer. Round. <laughs> okay, okay. I, real quick uh, with the eggs thing, uh, you, maybe you answered this, but I. I so when a woman is born with all of the eggs that, and then yeah. do, do we know how many that is about? Or is there a, so it's about 400,000. 400,000. Okay. Mm. Wow. But then by yeah. the time they reach puberty, it's already less than half of that. What? And the, the confusing thing is, is every month at the beginning of the month, you're actually, your body is naturally growing sometimes around 20 to 40 eggs on your ovaries before it decides which one it wants to choose to ovulate that month. And what happens to those other eggs is they just get reabsorbed into like, they're just gone. It's not like if you're on birth control pills and you're not getting a period every month, um, that you're, you're saving those eggs by any means. And then also when you do go through IVF cycles and you're having 20 retrieved, it doesn't mean that you're like taking away from future egg development. Now, is it the younger the eggs, the better? Or like, is it like teenage eggs the best? And then it's like 20, or do they peak at 25 and go yeah. down? What a weird question. <laughs> it is a really weird question, but it's very true. The younger the eggs are pretty much the more, the higher the chance that they're genetically normal. And that's why you have a higher pregnancy rate the younger that you are. So once you hit 35, not only are you a geriatric pregnancy, but you also have a rapid decrease in your fertility rate because your eggs are starting to now become genetically abnormal. Thank God I'm finally in the clear. Who is... Isn't it so cool? <laughs> who is eligible for IVF? Uh, Jim said over the age of 18, if you have enough money. Is that how it works? That, those things are both correct. Very, very correct. IVF is incredibly expensive. And so it's not accessible to a lot of people in the US. Um, I will say in Australia and now in Germany, my experiences are a little bit different because the um, IVF fields in both of those countries are a little bit subsidized by the government. So it's usually more affordable for patients. So you're seeing a higher volume of patients actually go through the procedures as well. Yeah, that's why I went to India because IVF in North you America. Can you just is, mail the eggs? 
no, because you because the whole process is what takes forever. It's like so mm. you're going to see those doctors, but medical tourism is very popular because it's like yep. a quarter of the cost of what it would be in North America. And, and that's a question. But how much is it? You can just answer that now. Jim said ten thousand per time. Um, but, so uh, it depends on the clinic and where you're located, and also if you're living in a state that's insurance mandated, because there are a few states in the U.S. that do have some fertility coverage. But usually you're going to pay, I would say, minimum around $10,000. And that's if you have some sort of insurance coverage. And you can pay upwards of like $35,000 for an IVF cycle, uh, depending on where you are and how intricate and advanced your stimulation protocols are. Is that good because it stops poor people from procreating? Uh, that is not <laughs> so many hot takes this episode. This is the canceled episode. It's so the last one. It's the last one we're doing, people. I'm just saying, you know, so you know, they people. can't afford the kids, and it's like the world's already overpop. Oh, shut well, up. jumping ahead here, <laughs> jumping jumping ahead here. What is the success rate of IVF? Jim said thirty percent. Now, when you answer that question, I also, if it costs somebody, let's say fifteen, twenty thousand, to do this. It could not work too, right? Yeah, yeah. you have to keep oh, coming it's back. It's very likely to back. not work. So yeah. do, do you get do you get yeah. like a money back thing? Like, no. hey, that one didn't work. No, and my brother went through it three or four times. Some clinics do offer a sort of money back guarantee now, actually. So wow. you pay up front for like four IVF cycles or something, and then if you get pregnant after the first one, they give you some sort of reimbursement package back. Mm -hmm. um, I would say that if you're under 35, the national average for pregnancy is probably around 55 percent. Wow. maybe closer to 50%. Um, and that's take home birth rate usually. So that means you'll have a baby in your hands if you go through an IVF cycle. Yeah. Um, but once you start to increase the age, um, there's a, a drop off. So you're probably at like 40% if you're between 35 and 38. Um, and then it drops off pretty significantly thereafter. So 40 to 41, or sorry, 39 to 40 is probably closer to 30%. And then after that, it's like pretty, pretty low. And does, once you're over 42, it's like maybe one percent. Do you ever have people come to you after it's all done and come into your office with the baby and go, why didn't you tell us how hard this is? <laughs> what the fuck did I waste my money on? Yeah, no, I haven't gotten that response. But do you, Usually it's do you, a lot do you, of gratitude do you, do you, and gratefulness. Do you, do, you do you ever say to them, you, do you ever just pull them aside and just go, okay, so we're ready to go here. We're filling all the paperwork. We've got the money. Just a quick thing. Um, having a baby sucks. <laughs> do you know? Are you, are you sure? You sure? It really sucks. It gets better, but it's really hard work. Can you choose? Uh, not having a child of my own, I don't try oh, it's to bloody put hard. that on them. It's bloody hard work. I love my kids in many ways, but holy hell. <laughs> you love them in many ways. <laughs> <laughs> can, nah, I love my kids. Can you choose the sex of the child? Jim says yes, but they don't uh, encourage if you, it. If you do genetic testing on the embryos, which is now available, uh, yes, you can choose the sex of the embryo. Oftentimes, what it's actually used for is uh, to check the genetic component other than the sex chromosomes. So to prevent Down syndrome or um, other types of numerical abnormalities in embryos that can cause either miscarriage or, you know, any sort of like issue with Klinefelter syndrome is another one that has a numbers error in the embryo. And so if you have a genetically normal embryo, it can increase your chance of pregnancy. If you have multiple, then sure, sometimes, depending on the physician, they might let you choose which sex you want. With what you're doing, um, has there been historically or even now any pushback from religious groups that believe... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, okay, I, don't, I don't know because I thought they're all for us all yeah, getting pregnant yeah, and keeping yeah. and all the, you know. So. Yeah, but they only like you to get pregnant if it's under their terms. They right. don't like you to seek help. Some religions, I mean, I think some religions are coming around to it as it's gaining more and more popularity, and also their numbers of church members are dying in rapid amounts, and they want to up those numbers. So mm. now they're like, "It's cool, you can do IVF. We're fine with it." <laughs> Um, but they, but did, they, people, they, they didn't want people who could, cause it wasn't God's will. Is that what? Yeah. They, yeah. But, but you God, know, God whole, made like, you and you're the one doing it. Is someone willing it along? Hey, if, yeah. So <laughs> I, it's involved at some point or yeah, we're all on the God same team on this one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> but um yeah there are a lot of religious and you know it's also unfortunately not uncommon to see like anti-abortion uh protesters outside of fertility clinics sometimes because i don't know they'd like to shame and make everyone feel bad about everything always yeah um and so because we store embryos on site and we have to discard mm. embryos if patients don't want to use them they also sometimes come after fertility clinics because of the discarded embryo. Do you put them like in a yeah, compost heap like or something that. like that? <laughs> Just yeah, I mean, and you have to turn it like every month yeah. so that it gets Good the right air. Yeah, do you ever yeah. get like people going through the trash trying to find some <laughs> old eggs? Yeah. See, <laughs> see this rose bush? No, that was but you know what? <laughs> Beautiful. Sometimes um, it's not uncommon for patients who want to discard their extra embryos to ask to take them with them and bury them or take them to their church and have them blessed by their priest or whatever. Mm. Um, so yeah, yeah everybody's little- thousands of bloody eggs and things. You can make an omelet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, what is IUI and how is it different than IVF? Jim said in up in instructions mm-hmm. of having sex mm-hmm. to have a baby mm-hmm. naturally. IUI. In up in. Yeah. That's IUI. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's like a cheat code for a game. Um, <laughs> no, it's um, intrauterine inseminations. And so what you do with IUI is the eggs stay in the body. So you, everything stays in the body and all you're doing is taking the sperm sample, concentrating it and washing it for any of the debris that is commonly found in semen um, and putting it directly right, into the uterus. <laughs> right, I mean, there's, there's go, debris. Back, go back a bit. <laughs> debris and semen, the, the, yeah. The, for any of the debris that's in semen. You got was some it, mulch in there. There's a <laughs> sense, like, like, yeah, there's shrapnel from the fuselage. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, there's a tumbleweed. <laughs> no, but like, you know, it's a bodily fluid. So sometimes you have like bacteria or, or anything like that. I mean, there can be things in there or, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I just Red Bull. Yeah, I, I came into this cup, but I was also spitting tobacco in there before, yeah. so you want to wash that out. Yeah, don't, don't swim through that garbage patch that's the size of Texas. You'll get pregnant. Uh, but yeah, so you just clean it up and put it directly into the uterus and see if it will fertilize the egg um, more naturally on its own. It's a less expensive route. It also has a significantly lower success rate, but for patients who aren't ready to like dive into the world of IVF, or it's it don't have as much money to be able to afford a full IVF cycle. It's it's another option for them. Do that? Do you when they first come in and go, Doc? We've been well, you know, but, but they go, we've been trying, we've been having sex, we're having that. Do you ever look at the couple and go, do you do you leave it in on the last thrust, or do you you know what I mean? <laughs> or, or do, like all those things? Have you tried like, handstands no, after like, yeah, he comes like, in? Yeah, like the woman's meant to be on an angle, so the cum flows up a bit more, or anything like that. Or are any of those true? Um, I mean, they're pretty much wives' tales for the most part. Well, um, that's a, uh, wives and mothers. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're, they're, they're old wives. They probably have plenty yeah. of kids. Oh, well, son of a bitch, you got me there. Um, <laughs> The old husband's tale is the only one. <laughs> you don't want to hear no, the old um, husband's tale. Oh, yeah. But you did mention at the beginning, like, are you putting it in the right hole? I've had patients not be putting it in the right hole. So oh, no. the idea of why you're not getting Was that the pregnant, dad who was grinning you to hear? <laughs> <laughs> there just seems to be like a lot of confusion among both of them. So and you have to get a chart out. Yeah, yeah. like all right. yeah. So and that's, that's, that's stage. It's that stage. Did you feel like going? We don't want you to have kids. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, thankfully, I just work in the lab, so it's only just the nurses and doctors. Oh, so, like so, the, so you're in the lab there with your egg and your cum all around you. <laughs> <laughs> All around me. Yeah, you're there with cups that come everywhere, and you got to. You got. Yeah. I, I hope you keep a clean desk. By the way, that no, seems like a God, job yeah. where you need to have a nice, efficient area. Black so lady desk. You've got bloody cum all over, not all over, all around you, and you got some <laughs> eggs in a tray and all that stuff. And then a nurse comes back like this and goes, "Come here, come here, Rachel, come here." Come here. There's a couple who's fucking each other in the ass, and I don't know why they're getting pregnant. <laughs> And then you're like, yeah, I mean, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, why wouldn't they use a vagina? He, he says that you'd rather use the ass. He says they're too close <laughs> together. You can't figure them out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> why would they put them right there? Yeah, yeah. How um, how long does the procedure take uh, and is the process painful? Jim says it takes longer than the sex with him, shorter than an episode of the Simpsons, yeah, the Simpsons movie. 
I'm going to block off the whole afternoon. Give yourself an afternoon. <laughs> go out to lunch before, have the thing, do the procedure, go to Soho <laughs> House and have a couple of drinks. <laughs> How long does it take? Is it painful? He said, yeah, I think we can agree it's probably painful. But yeah, and I think Kelly spoke to that a little bit, right? Or no? Yeah. Um, I, I, for me personally, I froze my eggs and it wasn't painful. Um, but the entire process leading up to like the actual surgical procedure wasn't painful, but the process leading up to it is a little daunting because you do have to inject yourself multiple times a day with needles and you're all hopped up on hormones and you already feel like a crazy person. You so had to inject yourself with a needle. Of, yeah. You have to take the, yeah. oh, no. yeah, in your stomach. Can't do that. <laughs> Can't do that. Forrest, you're not going to enjoy diabetes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to train Arnie how to give me a shot. <laughs> um, the actual surgical procedure only takes like 30 minutes. It's an out of, um, oh. like an outpatient procedure. So you go That's home nice. that same day. Oh. No, you shouldn't be drinking afterwards because you have had anesthesia. Kelly. Mm. And I don't did. go out for a oh, lunch Oh, Kelly, you had, a, you had a few bevies afterwards. You're like this. At the, at the bar in the, in the building, the frozen egg. <laughs> <laughs> I, had a, <laughs> I had a slurpee of cum after my procedure. <laughs> Delicious. Yeah. yeah. All these drinks look like blue milk from Star Wars. <laughs> but so, so um, that day you have your your surgical procedure, and basically what happens is for the next several hours, the embryologist is culturing and cleaning the cells before they can in. Well, like Jim said, he mentioned a process where you inject the sperm directly into the egg. That's called ICSI. It's intracytoplasmic uh, sperm injection. And also because it's a bit ICSI. <laughs> <laughs> but that is a process um, that's usually used for male factor infertility, but now it's really, really widespread and used. Otherwise, we just put the sperm and egg together in a drop and see if they fertilize in a more conventional way on their own. Um, and then the following day, we check fertilization, and then we check the embryo's development every day, most days at least, for the next five days. And that's usually if the patient is having an embryo transfer along with their retrieval cycle, then we transfer the embryo or embryos on day five. Mm. And then they find out if they're pregnant about two weeks after that. Here's one for you. That's going to sound like I'm trying to make a joke. So if, if someone has a low sperm count, is the solution to make him come several times to make it a bigger load? I, I, I know so, it's like, like, like and if you haven't tried that, I think I've just got a life hack. <laughs> crack the code. I think I just cracked the code. Save it for the segment. <laughs> no, no, but if it's not enough cum, just you come several times, we'll add it all together, lots of cum. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, in theory, that might work. Cool. Um, the problem is, is if you, so basically we tell men to have an abstinence period of two to five days prior to their collection mm. because then you can kind of accumulate a good amount of sperm cells uh, in one ejaculate, but not have too many that have been sitting there too long and might have some DNA degradation from just sitting in your testicles. Um, and so you have this abstinence period. And then, so once you ejaculate, usually you're following ejaculate, Jim, you can probably speak to this. Like so you the cum that's in the day. whiskey cup in my cinema, <laughs> is that still good? No. Yeah. What? Yeah, no, definitely. <laughs> I drink but each, each time you ejaculate in a given day, you're going to actually produce less volume yeah, just yeah. because the gland needs to kind of work. If I don't come for ages, more. I get that first little bit that's like jelly, you know, that like gelatin bit. Is that, yeah, is that, so, is that some powerful ass cum or is that an infection? No, it's like old <laughs> and dry. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's you know been, how like it's rubber been, yeah, it's been in my it balls forever. It feels like silicon. It's like it's like it, it, it's not biodegradable. I it's just imagine forever. Jim sitting there playing with his own case. Like, ooh, oh, <laughs> I, yeah. I love that jelly cum, man. <laughs> I tell you what, if you haven't come for a few days and you have that bit, and it really has to work its way through to the end of your cock, and then when it shoots out, you're like jelly cum. <laughs> I'm telling you, that's a good ass wank that is. I've not experienced uh, this. Oh, you you wank it's too much. Not, you wank it's not too much. like everyone does. No, no, <laughs> but you know what I mean. If you little, haven't had it. It's okay. But you know that little bit. It comes out like a small worm. Yeah, what? Yeah, yeah. It's like a gummy worm. Coming I know out? exactly what you're talking about. It's and fantastic. It's me. fantastic. <laughs> Gives the woman something to play with after you go to the bathroom. Uh, Forrest, do you have this? 
Some episodes, I feel like Luis is like, I don't know what I'm going to use here for, uh, for, there's, <laughs> for the not enough, there's not enough clips for me to use yeah. to promote the show. This one, I feel like it's there's going to be a lot. All clips. Yeah, that, uh, <laughs> you, you get Jelly me worm. talking about cum, you're going to have yourself a hell of a conversation. <laughs> um, are the results better when you use your own egg sperm versus donor egg sperm? Jim says no difference at all. Unless you use jelly cum. Um, <laughs> don't use jelly cum. There's never any sperm in it, pretty much. Tastes like it has sperm in it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have so many things, but okay. Um, so if you use donor egg and sperm, it just depends. If if you're older, then yes, usually you're going to have a higher success rate because those gametes, uh, the donor, either sperm or eggs, are usually from a younger patient. And so again, you're going to have a higher chance of genetic normality in the chromosomes that they offer. Okay. Right on. All right, and our last question. How did Octomom have eight children through IVF? He said, I believe that she put too many <laughs> eggs in her at once. She put all of her eggs in one basket. So put all the eggs in there at once, and then one bit of jelly come went in there, and it went off like a shrapnel bomb. <laughs> <laughs> um, so she, I think, transferred like 12 embryos in one cycle. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it, that's what happens. And it shouldn't, but he lost his medical license and she got a TV show. You know, they're, yeah. She's meant to be a very nice lady. Yeah, I don't know if you people have met her. She, they, she, people I mean, thought she was this psychopath, but she's meant to be a very nice lady. Because I, I, I mean, I think in a lot of IVF, they implant Never hear more than one embryo sometimes just to make sure there's a chance that one of them sticks, right? Yeah, so definitely but 12 is I too many. Around, yeah, around the time that she was doing um, her IVF, I think it was like 2008, 2009. Sure, it wouldn't be uncommon to transfer more than one embryo because the success rates were lower. Um, we weren't able to as confidently transfer with a good chance of pregnancy. So we would increase the number of embryos that we transferred at one time. And that's why you saw a huge boom in like twins, oh. triplets, things like that. Did she already um, have but kids? Okay. She did. Yeah, she, did. she had yeah, like that's the bit that bothers six me. kids. Or, no, yeah, six kids or something already. What did you want another one for? What are you bloody doing? Yeah. Why do you want another one? Why yeah. do you want another eight? Yeah, that's yeah, 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 yeah. No, well, yeah, the Duggars yeah, have like 20 kids. Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah. Can't talk about well, them. Yeah. Or is yeah. that that people who get the kids chained to the bed? And and count, no, Kate, but that, Kate, I just watched Kate the Dateline on that the other night. That's no good either. Yeah, that's no good either. That's chaining good either. chaining your kids up what to the bed. What are you still having kids for? They had like 16 kids there. Yeah, they never let them leave the house. And also, who's oh. having 16 kids? People go, oh, we don't use uh, contraception because we're religious. Isn't a woman who's already given birth to 14 kids contraception enough? Yeah. <laughs> Why are you, you would still, think. Every time you put your dick in it, oh, another one come along, that would be like, I'm good. Just going to have a wank and a cup. Yeah. <laughs> jelly cum. All right, so. <laughs> jelly cum, jelly, jelly cum. cum. What are they feeding you? Got to redo the merch. <laughs> All right. Uh, this is the part of the show called Dinner Party Facts where we ask our guests uh, to give us one fact or, or something interesting that our listeners, viewers can, you know, impress people at a dinner party or bar about this subject. So the only thing I can really think of off the top of my head, sorry, I've had a lot going on lately, but um, <laughs> is that 10% of all births in Denmark are actually from assisted reproductive technologies. So it's actually the highest percentage by population um, of anywhere in the world. And it's like, that's a crazy amount. 10% is a high number. Yeah, but they're also high good looking there. Very high number. That's, a, that's a good selling point for it, man. They're all hot as fuck in Denmark, man. Yeah. Good food. Well, and the other thing in Denmark, they have an excellent social security um, situation for their healthcare. And so it's very, very accessible to their people as well. Um, actually, it spawns a lot of fertility tourism within the EU. A lot of other countries who have more restrictive laws, the patients end up usually going there. I read a crazy stat the other day that I don't think I believe, but that one in six um, children in America, um, the father isn't the actual father, you know, like the mother's. Uh, yeah, I, I think that's a bit high as well. I think that because also who's the pe who when they do this stat, when they ask the people, yeah. they must be finding some low rent ass fucking people in a trailer park to fucking do this. They'll, they'll answer the question for 20 bucks. Because I, even if I was the woman in the, no one will know. I'd still lie and go, that's the dad. <laughs> I, would, I would never give that one up. That one would be till the grave. Um, I don't know why I brought that up. But, but oh, here's, here's my question. I know we meant to wrap that up. 
Have you ever been labelling cups of cum and gone, oh, fuck, I lost count, and then you go, oh, I just put Mr. Johnson on there? God, no. <laughs> No, you can talk about you can not. talk about it off air. You can tell the truth <laughs> off air. If you want to tell a story when you when you mixed up the cum, or then like out of like a, a, a fast movie, like where a superhero where one cup of cum accidentally pours into the other cup of cum. Well, there's a movie I just watched on Lifetime recently about it was like switched before birth and they fucked up in that way, and then these people were friends and then realized like, wait, you that one of your twins is my child. She miscarried her child. It was a, a whole oh, mess. I, I know a couple who. Two gay guys, they both had sex at once with a lesbian so that they could raise the child. It was going to be their child so that they wouldn't know who the father was. And then, you know, one of them was black and one of them was white. It's pretty obvious <laughs> in the end. I don't know, no, no, no. But one of them had curly hair, one of them had straight hair. And so the baby has curly hair, so they figured out pretty quick which okay. one it was was with. Um, could me and Forrest, let's say if me and Forrest wanted to get uh, Jack pregnant, right? <laughs> yep. And mm. and if me and Forrest both came in a cup, can you do that? Just stir the cum up. Right. Oh, mix so we don't ever do that. No, but, but I mean, could if, you in theory, or would would, would uh, my if you're doing it at home, be sure. dominant <laughs> and knock the yeah. shit out of Forest Cup IVF? Yeah. Or would so Forest Cup float like to the an, top? So something that's pretty common, especially in like um, lesbian couples, mm. is if you you're not technically infertile, you just don't have a sperm exposure, right? So like you don't have a sperm source. So if you have someone that you know that will ejaculate. It is not uncommon to have people get pregnant with a turkey baster at home. So if you guys wanted to pair together, mix, I don't know, it'd have to be a, a big gulp cup, apparently, if Jim's... <laughs> if Jim's yeah, in yeah, no, no, no. I, What I do is but, I just uh, fuck the turkey directly <laughs> and, then I, and then I pour it into the woman. <laughs> Stuffing. Happy Thanksgiving. Yeah, yeah. I don't need the base. I just shoot it straight up into the turducken. That's a sure. DIY baby. <laughs> yeah, I come in it and the duck falls out. Mm-hmm. Well, thanks for being here, Rachel Watterson. Um, <laughs> on that note, that, is there? I, we didn't say anything about uh, any social media or anything. Do you, do you want people to you follow wanna... you? Do you not want anyone to know who you are for after this podcast? Or how do you... Sure. I mean, it's at RL Watterson is my Instagram. Perfect. W a t t e r s o n s o n yeah yep. And my Instagram is at Jellycum. <laughs> it will be now. That's my that's my private one for you, all the fun people. This is this is exact. I wanted to do an episode on this topic, but I was like, I do not want to bring a some stranger on here because I knew it was going to be, I knew it was going to become heavy. So time. I'm very glad I knew an expert in this. Field. I don't think yeah. I was rude or anything. No, 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 I no, asked, absolutely not. I asked and it is like question. right on par. For- I asked the questions. What's on everyone's mind. Yeah. 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 It was just sure. a very come heavy. Uh, it was good. I learned a lot. I didn't know anything about this. I learned a lot. Oh, I do want to make a, an additional follow up comment. Jim, you were talking about vasectomies not being reversed. Hmm. They do still reverse them. However, the success rate is not as high as it once was believed. So, yes, you're right. And I'm shocked that you know about this procedure because it makes me feel bad for whoever you know who's had it done. Because <laughs> otherwise, you wouldn't know about it. Oh, but where they wow. do take a needle and, in, and stick it directly into the testicles to retrieve the sperm. No, you, I know mean, that, you mean nut juice? Yeah, I know. Yes, I, nut juice. I'm, I know, I'm I know, so sorry. I, I didn't know. know. I know someone who had that done. He would be yeah, very unhappy with me if I mentioned it. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. But it's actually a super easy procedure. Um, and guys obviously complain about it a lot. But compared to the surgery that the women have to have, it's much, much easier I, and less painful. i got to be honest with you. I'm going to get a vasectomy. And no matter how much it hurts, if whatever the healing time is, I'm taking an extra week. Yeah, yeah. You got to tell my wife. I'm going to be like this. It's not even one day, just so you know. (laughs) (laughs) So he's going to have a one week recovery. I'm going to, for 10 days, just give me a bag of ice for when she walks by. (laughs) Maybe milk and cookies will make me feel better. I always recommend people freeze their sperm beforehand. That way you don't have to have this surgery thereafter if you ever decide to try and father another child. I just don't think I should father another child, and I think uh, that's enough for me. I I believe, (laughs) I think it was George Carlin said you can replace yourself, right? So I've had... A baby with two different women. I've had two kids, so I could even have one more, and the world's population would stay the same because it's always the same. Mm-hmm. People, it's these dickheads who have fucking plenty of the fucking things. You rock the people. 
Um, anyway, <laughs> that's a right wing opinion. That's not a right wing. That's a left. Is that a left or a right wing? I don't know. That's it's your own like, section. It's a yeah, new direction. Yeah, that's a new one because <laughs> all the right wing people are having heaps of the babies, and then. Uh, but I'm bothered by people having too many bloody kids. <laughs> Anytime you want to wrap it up. All right. If you ever had a party, <laughs> you ever had a par- party, and someone says, uh, says, uh, all come is uh, milky and smooth. Uh, <laughs> Just shoot a bit of jelly at him and say, I don't know about that. Walk away. (laughs) Good night, Australia.